So folks, today I want to run through or have run through my thoughts on this knife, which is a Groman number no. four survival knife. Made in Canada and designed by DH Russell. So I'll be running through some uses for this knife and then some general conclusions at the end. So this Groman number no. four survival knife, it's quite an interesting blade actually. Um, I've only recently come across them. They're not that well known, certainly outside of Canada. I think they're very well known in Canada, but 
I'd never come across them until relatively recently. Um, and it is an interesting history with these. Groman was a immigrant from, I think, Czechoslovakia, possibly after the Second World War, moved out to Canada in Nova Scotia. And that's where he set up his knife making business. And I think in the 50s, he worked with D.H. Russell to design a series of knives um, and they numbered one to four. And this is number four and they, they range in size. This is the biggest. And he actually ended up the number three um, was actually in, I believe still is, is issued to the Canadian Air Force. So it's actually a military knife. And I'm quite, quite interested in military knives because often they are utility knives. They're not really made for anything else. So they don't have any fancy extras. They literally are designed for a purpose and built to that purpose and you know nothing else. So you can get quite a good value knife often. And these aren't that expensive for a knife that is made in Canada. Um, and I believe all their knives are still made in Canada. Quite a small company, um, I think 25 employees or so, according to the brochure. And they're still all based in Nova Scotia. And yeah, so it's quite an interesting company. Um, and so I was, I was keen to try it out, and it's it's quite a nice little knife, actually. So the one I got, um, you have a choice of sheath types, and you also have a choice of blades. So there's a carbon or a stainless. This is actually a carbon version. So it's got Canada on there, and then on, on this side, Groman D.H. Russell number no. 4 carbon. comes with a well there are some handle options but um, I'm not sure there were that many available to me in the UK but there may be this is a, a rosewood one and the information states that the rosewood is from uh, managed plantations in India so they it's not one of the um, native ones that are taken out of protected areas so it is a sustainable sourced rosewood this particular one comes with a four mil um, blade stock and I think the number three which is the one issued to the army is a, a three mil or a, an eighth of an inch inch So they're not massive knives and this one is a survival knife if you think about Survival knives that often come from other parts of the world or well, particularly in the States they're often really big chunky knives and I think a lot of that is to do with the idea of trying to have one tool to do everything and they're more like machetes than, than knives. Whereas it seems to me that the the Canadian sort of ethos is more, they use the knife for a knife's purpose. Um, and you know, that's what it's used for. And you'll have, and I think it's similar to the sort of Scandinavian tradition where you have axes for a lot of the chopping tasks and you'd use a knife really for game preparation or campfire duties, etc. cetera. Um, so I do quite like that approach. I think the whole one, massive knife idea is probably a flawed concept so um you know i think this is it's, it's a nice idea and as i say this is their biggest one the one that's issued to the army is actually quite a lot smaller so they're quite small knives really for knives issued to military people it is quite simple and a lot of the aesthetic actually is a bit like a, a kitchen knife in many ways just three brass rivets piece of wood and some flat stock um, and they actually do make a range of kitchen knives as well um, and probably use exactly the same manufacturing facilities and just use the different patterns for whichever knife they're making. Um, so it, it's actually, it might look large on the camera, but it's not a massive knife. It's not heavy in the hand. It's quite a small handle, but it does fit very comfortably in the hand. So it's got this section here, it narrows a lot towards the end of the handle much narrower than a typical bushcraft knife and it, it very nice for any kind of carving or getting up close and supporting uh, well you can support your thumb on this jimping in the back and you can get your index finger on that sort of area where the choil is and it really gives you a good strong grip especially with this narrow portion here and you know with the jimping in that choil there you get a lot of control on this section of the blade. This one is a, a sabre grind and the two options that, you, that I could have got was a sabre or a full flat. So the full flat would have been more like a, a kitchen knife. 
but I quite like these saber grinders. One of my probably my favourite grind actually, because you still got the strength in the spine, but you've got quite a lot of usable fine blade. And I'll put the footage in this video as well, but you may have seen from my previous video using this for cooking tasks around the campfire. It's actually really good at slicing. And that's, you know, largely because it's a relatively narrow stock and it's got a nice grind for that purpose as well. This one also with this extra, well, the sort of bulbous front end gives it a slight bit of extra weight. So I was able to do some light chopping with it, which, you know, can come in handy for very small carving tasks. I wouldn't want to do anything, you know, any large chopping, but certainly trail clearance. And this little spruce that I cleared off is really was in the trail so if anyone thinks I was being overly destructive of a young tree this is actually a, it's regrowth in an old plantation that was clear felled and the trail is totally overgrown with all this um, mass of spruce regrowth so we actually are doing some trail clearing today and I was just trying it out on a very small one and it was obviously fine for that um, but anything larger really, I'd prefer to use an axe, I wouldn't want to use a knife for that. So the sheath this one came with was this uh, military style, is what they call the military style option. So it's got a full cover, sand, bound, sand brown stud. Um, and I really like this type of sheath. Um, I like the military aesthetic and I like the sand brown stud. So that's very secure, it's not going to fall out. You have got options, you can just get one that where it just slips in like that. And then there's a third option with a lower end and a strap that comes over. I did see some feedback on on YouTube where people were finding that when they were taking the blade out, there was a potential to cut that um, strap. So I think this is a very good option. It's very secure, and that's also what they use for the military issue blades. Um, it's nicely finished, nicely stitched, and um, certainly you see the older versions on the internet so a lot of people actually have their parents or grandparents army issue and they have a lovely patina on the leather as well as on the carbon blade so they do seem to stand the test of time and really develop a nice patina it's not a particularly expensive knife either um, considering it's actually made in Canada so you know anything made in the Western world tends to be quite expensive, and this really isn't that expensive. Um, still made by hand. Um, well, I, I don't know how much made by hand, but certainly finished by hand. Um, and very well made and well finished. I mean, it's not finished to the highest level of perfection, but certainly well enough to make you very happy with the knife. So I bought this from a company called Colonial Knives. And they're based in the UK, but it's a, a Canadian expat living in the UK called Jeff McDonald. And he's the one who sources these knives and brings them over and sells them on in the UK. So it arrives in quite a nice um, sort of box, really nicely done, thick box. Um, it has quite a lot of well, bump with it. You get the catalogue, so there's a kitchen knife catalogue as well as an outdoor knife catalogue. And I just want to show you this, but because it came from Jeff, um, he actually, when he had bound it up, it was very well packaged, and he included a Canadian $1, uh, which was actually quite a nice little touch, it's like a little seal of quality from him. And um, yeah, I really like it, and particularly, not sure if you can see it, but actually on this $1, I've never come across a Canadian $1 before, but it has a... Well, on this side of the pond we call Great Northern Diver, I think they're called loons in 
Canada. So I'm a birder and I love that idea. So really nice touch from Jeff. This say it's got the came with a kitchen knife catalogue that they sell, but also the outdoor one. Um, this is part of the outdoor catalogue. They have got some folders as well as um, the flex blades and a bit of the history. And you can see the various sheath types. And in this particular section is the four D.H. Russell design. So it was a collaboration between Groman and a chap called D.H. Russell. Um, that doesn't give too much information about who he was, but he designed these four. Um, the survival knife's the largest. And the number three, I believe, is the one they issued to the Canadian Army or Air Force. So it's got a long history of practical use. And, um, you know, it's very nicely presented. As I say, Jeff packaged it extremely well. Um, he's very responsive to any emails. So I highly re recommend his company. And, um, yeah, really interesting knife. Why not, you know, you don't see anything typically that sort of shape. I mean, I find it quite unusual the way it's sort of, you have this sweep, this sort of curve like this. Often you see knives curving the other way. It's quite common. But this actually is really comfortable shape. Um, now I know, I think a lot of them are designed for hunters and trappers. So probably game prep is key for the use of a lot of their blades. Um, but this one certainly is weighty enough. Um, and, you know, the shape of the blade is serves a sort of bushcraft purpose really well it's not a typical bushcraft shape by any stretch um you know you think of the wood law by ray mears it doesn't look like that at all but it certainly works very well feels very good in the hand nicely balanced it came with this strap which is useful when you're doing chopping you can hold it near the end um but you know even without that there's a lot of grip here with the jimping nice as I mentioned, this thin section by the neck, and then it swells quite well towards the back. So there's definitely a very positive grip on the blade. So I think just as general purpose, bushcraft or camping, pretty decent blade really. This wood that I was working on um, is actually the wood that I mentioned from this clear fell. And it was clear felled a few years ago now. So it is spruce, it's, it's pretty, it's very dry. So it's not green wood, it was dry and quite hard, but you know, it coped with, uh, I mean, I'm not an expert on feather sticks, but you know, that would be certainly well enough to get a fire going. And carving this large tent peg, um, you know, it's quite hard, it's not green wood. And you know, I was able to chop the point a little bit as well. No problem there. Um, clearing a trail, it's just small, um, small material in your way, it's quite easy chopping through that. You can see I was getting through the fresh stuff quite easily. So I did do some battening. Um, I'm not a massive fan of battening to split wood with a knife. You know, I much prefer the idea of having an axe. Um, I'm very unlikely, or hopefully it's not likely that I'll be in a survival situation. Um, and I think if you are in a survival situation, you don't often get to choose what you have with you. So that when you do get to choose it, have a knife and an axe and use the axe for the heavy work and the knife for the light work. So I did try a little bit of battening because I know some people really like to see that. Um, it handled no problem on the stuff I was trying to split. It was quite hard, but it wasn't too thick. Um, but it certainly was good enough to get yourself a campfire going. So for basic camping and bushcraft, you know, you can do all the basics you want to do. You can get your tent set up sorted. You can get your fire materials made you can clear the trail you can do some food prep and you know what more do you want from a knife really for me that pretty much serves all my purposes um value wise you know this is a knife made in the western world by people who you know are treated well so you know you haven't got those problems of something that comes from an unknown source so i quite like that i like to support companies like that and you know it's not some of these small makers making bespoke knives, they do charge a lot of money now, so it's getting harder and harder to justify recommending expensive knives like that. Um, whereas this one, okay, it's, it's got a simple aesthetic, as I said, it's nothing too fancy, but it certainly works as a utility knife. And, you know, I think in Canada, they 
pretty cheap these obviously bringing them into the uk has some you know import implications but i think this was the with this sheath which is slightly more expensive than the basic it was around a hundred pounds i think um which when you consider that a lot of these um you know handmade knives could be double that quite easily um and a lot of good quality bushcraft knives are well over a hundred so i think for for what you're getting and what you can do with it it's a, a really good value proposition in my mind um so i really like this knife i recommend the company and i also very much recommend jeff at colonial knives so if anyone in the uk particularly is interested in this definitely go check out colonial knives i'll put a link in the description below um but certainly the service i had from him and the nice little touches the packaging the little dollar canadian dollar all very nice personal touches so you really get a good feel when you support a company that you know puts in the extra effort so definitely if you're interested in this i i think possibly the military version the number three which is definitely smaller it hasn't got as bulbous shape on top so if you're not going to do any sort of heavy chopping like the trail clearing or the battening or anything like that and you're going to be doing more camp work i think the smaller knife might even be more useful um, as a utility blade um, it's going to be thinner stock so better for food prep and you know that's sort of game prep and things like that um, so that, that that's the number three i believe um, and the number one i think was the original canadian belt knife is called um, and I think the three is the boat knife, not 100%, but um, they both look like really good and interesting blades as well. And they, I think, prob probably cheaper than this because they're smaller, but I'm not sure. Um, but definitely go check them out. And yeah, I'm definitely recommending this knife. So thanks for watching and um, hopefully that was of use to someone. Uh, if you did like it, then please consider subscribing. Thanks very much.